Ecuador is known for its incredible biodiversity due to being where the Andes meets the Amazon. This vital ecosystem has been exploited and few realize the true devastation that has occurred. For over 40 years, oil has been extracted from the jungle. Once pristine virgin forests and rivers, they are now contaminated. Unlined waste pools still exist, which continue to overflow and seep down into the water table. Between 1964 and 1992, Texaco spilled over 18 and a half billion gallons of toxic waste into unlined pits. Most of these remain untouched, although there have been attempts of remediation using bacteria, but this has not shown completely successful results. A need for a more effective method was necessary. Queremos es que nos limpien estos pozos que han dejado de petróleo contaminado que hace mucho daño tanto para uno como para los animales. Y contaminan los ríos también porque aquí muy cerca hay un río y, y eso va contaminándose por dentro de la tierra. Por ejemplo, cuando está muy fuerte el sol, eso evapora, se apercibe. Si uno va pasando por ahí, apercibe. Y eso da, da mareos, da dolor de cabeza. Eh, también de las aguas salen manchas en el cuerpo, da unas comezones. Que ya sea el tiempo que, que hagan algo por los campesinos, lo que se dice, ya que nos han dejado contaminando nuestros terrenos. Sí. And we used this oyster mushroom in order to produce spawn to do bioremediation on this oil tank. Right here, this is the culprit. <laughs> Um, 500 gallons of diesel. After hearing about myco-remediation, the use of mushrooms to break down hydrocarbons, the question was whether or not this technique would work in this environment. Studies around the world have shown myco-remediation to be up to 95% effective, but never before had it been documented in the Amazon. So there was only one way to find out to start trials here in the Ecuadorian Amazon. A team of experts donated their time and energy to come down to Ecuador to implement these trials, to discover with scientific testing if this method of remediation could truly help with the cleanup of the contaminated sites. The team soon got to work sorting out the logistics. First, they went to look at a number of sites to discover which would be the best place for the trials. You can clearly smell the petroleum in this soil. After discussing the ideal location, the team got to work, unloading the 300 kilos of mycelium that would be used in the trials and building the necessary infrastructure. Half of the burlap bags were pasteurized with a weak hydrogen peroxide solution to see if this would help and give our mushrooms a better start without the competition from other fungi and bacteria. The bags were fully rinsed and left to drain. This looks like it's perfect for our needs for remediation. Fungi will grow on this, and it's a great mixture of sawdust and more bigger pieces like this. It can also be great mulch to put over the installation so that we can just keep it from the sun, and it's good substrate, good food for the mycelium, and there's abundance of it here, so we'll be able to use it for our purposes for the site. The first step in this process is taking cardboard, wetting it, and ripping off the smooth layer to expose the corrugations. The mycelium will grow well on this corrugation because there's increased edge. And where there's edge, there's diversity of habitat from moisture to humidity. We add the inoculated sawdust onto this moist cardboard 
and then fold it, creating a microclimate for the mycelium to grow. Then we add about 10 of these myceliated cardboard packages into this burlap bag that's been inoculated with sawdust growing mycelium. There's also straw, wood chips, and sawdust that has not been inoculated in this bag. We take these little packages and put them deep within the burlap bag so that the mycelium can grow from the very fine material, like the sawdust and the cardboard, onto something more dense, like this dense piece of wood. The bags and the substrate within the bags are wet because the mycelium typically like a moist environment to grow. And we're doing a high spawn inoculation rate because this is a low-tech method of inoculating mushrooms onto substrate. Usually it's done in a lab with high intensive uh, heat, beat, and treat methods to sterilize the media. But we are passively pasteurizing the media in order to eliminate competing bacteria and fungi. And we're putting eight kilograms of mycelium in each one of these bags along with about 10 of these little packages of mycelium. So hopefully the mycelium will really take root in this bag and grow to colonize the whole bag, producing enzymes as they break down the substrate, the straw and the sawdust. And those exudates or those exoenzymes will wash down into the soil, breaking apart the hydrocarbon molecule. Passing the local disused station, it was time for the team to head out to begin the installation. Well, we just got out to the site checking out this pool, and this has been this way for 30 years where this oil has been dumped into this pool here, and there's a channel that leads off so that when there's heavy rain, the water will flow into that channel and then the river will take it down. So you look at it and there's vegetation, it looks like um, dark earth, but then poking at it and getting a chance to see what's there is there's clearly crude oil underneath the ground, just a couple inches, and water. So you know that the water underneath the ground is just channeling it over to this channel and that the oil has just stayed here for 30 years. So it's definitely toxic to wildlife, it's toxic to the people that depend on this part of the jungle, and there's, there's techniques that we have, that we've discovered, and that others have worked with for a long time that could metabolize this oil and this crude and break it down before it reaches the river. Well, I'm kind of uh, shocked to find something in the middle of the jungle that's, uh, you know, it's so, so industrial in, a, in character, you know, it, it isn't a natural uh, pool of any kind. I think I'm pretty shocked to see a site with like solid tar and product and continual sheen pouring out just sitting here. Have you uh, ever seen a site like this? No, never. Never. That's terrible. If I were looking at this same site in the United States somewhere, you know, there would be hazmat crews out here and uh, they'd be spending millions of dollars. Estoy bien impresionado sobre esto que hemos visto por primera vez, los derrames aquí. Siempre hemos visto cerca de la carretera derrames que eh, rápidamente lo limpian, eh, por lo menos parece que lo limpian, pero acá estamos viendo el petróleo de 30 años que está regado. La gente eh, invierte tanto dinero en esto, gana muchísimo dinero más y no puede gastar un poco de dinero en limpiar. De, eh, dañan mucho a la gente, dañan nuestro ecosistema y todo el mundo sabe de esto y no se hace nada. Ahora el trabajo está en tratar de limpiarlo, no puede quedar más tiempo así. Tenemos que ver la forma de remediar, de limpiar nuestro, nuestra tierra para que la gente ya no se enferme con estos, esta basura que dejan las empresas petroleras. En el Ecuador es muy típico ver el, los derrames de petróleo. Eh, es necesario hacer algo y es por eso que hemos puesto los, los hongos a 
en manos de, para el, el control de, esta, de este tipo de contaminación. Creo que es compromiso de todos nosotros como ecuatorianos, uniendo mano con man, uniéndonos con manos extranjeras, eh, hacer algo. Eh, ya que muchas empresas irresponsablemente dejaron derramado el petróleo. Es tiempo de actuar. We've taken burlap bags that are filled with sawdust, straw, and wood chips, which is an excellent food source substrate for the mushrooms to grow on. We've made three plots that we've surrounded by other burlap bags. On top of the nine burlap bags that we placed, we filled nine other burlap bags with contaminated petroleum from this site here. We dug back some of the vegetation and there's visibly and you can smell the oil that is near the surface and deep, deep below the levels here in these pools. So we have these burlap bags that are filled with the oily contaminated soil and what we'll do tomorrow is we'll take the burlap bags that have sawdust and straw and wood chips that have been inoculated with mushrooms and we'll add that on top of this contaminated oily product that's in these burlap bags. The intention is to see if the enzymes that the mushrooms produce as they break down the substrate, the sawdust and the straw and the wood chips, if those enzymes will also be capable of breaking down the petroleum hydrocarbons that is here in this unlined pit, this pool that's filled with oil here in, in the jungle. We have this oily soil that we've pulled up from the pool and these soil samples will be sent on ice to the lab in Quito and we should have results with what our baseline testing is within the week. Both the soil and water samples will be tested for levels of hydrocarbons and heavy metals. The testing is then carried out every three weeks for a three-month period to monitor the results. The final part in the installation was to lay the bags filled with sawdust, straw, wood chips and the mycelium on top of those filled with the oily crude. Using this simple, cheap and effective method we can show how low-tech this amazing permaculture technique really is. Creating a runway, we hoped the additional mycelium could then run towards the pool. Finally, the test site was covered with straw and a shade cloth to help keep the moisture in. Our group had comprised of a diverse gathering of individuals from different countries and different walks of life each with their own expertise and commitment to help make the world a better place. So it's been three days since we installed and the bags are still wet and moist and mycelium is starting to run and form in the bags and even on the burlap sacks like from the mycelium that's inoculated just in the sawdust and the packets look good so it looks good yeah in these boxes we put the crude that we extracted from the site with a mixture of substrate and packages of mycelium and we added more sawdust and straw to the top to keep the moisture in there is the control box and a number of boxes treated in different ways so we can watch to monitor the difference in the breakdown of the hydrocarbons. Once the remediation is complete, the mushrooms will be composted and hardwood trees will be grown. These trees will then absorb the remaining heavy metals in their growth. This is our contained experiment that we'll be monitoring weekly. It's covered to keep rain and wildlife out and it will be watered once a week and checked on. Pictures will be taken and we'll be able to view how the mycelium is growing and also smell once the odor of petroleum is gone. Chevron Texaco carved roughly a thousand open air waste pits in the jungle. Most still remain. Apart from these pits, there is the constant threat of new oil spills from old broken pipelines. 
We must look to the solutions of firstly replacing old infrastructure, using appropriate and efficient remediation techniques, and training locals to become emergency remediation crews. The aim of this project is to teach the locals not only about remediation, but also how they can grow edible and medicinal mushrooms for their own use and for sale. Courses will be regularly held, and if you are interested in finding out more, please visit our website, amazonmycorenewal.org. This trial has been the initial seed, but will show that we do not need to use chemicals or expensive techniques. We have the natural tools to start cleaning up this beautiful planet where we reside. <laughs>